Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Something a little bit different today. I've um, visiting friends. If you've been watching the last few videos, you'll know that I'm not in my craft room. I'm on the kitchen table at a friend's house, and I caught up with a relative, and um, she is downsizing. They're considering selling, so she's starting to go through the house and tidy up and get ready and pack. And we went over to say hello and she gave me her little sewing box, little itty bitty sewing box. So we're not, not talking very big. If I put my hand across here, you can sort of see, I don't have a ruler with me. So you can see it is just the cutest, littlest sewing box. She looked at it, she gave me the contents first. She's so cute. She gave me the contents first and um, I said, is the box included? And she said, no, no, no. So I handed the box back to her. And then um, she was sitting there looking at it going, oh, look how water stained it is. And I said to her, how long have you had it? And she said, I had that in primary school. And I thought, oh, melt your heart, I tell you. So she's sitting there looking at it while we continued to chat and I had a look through these goodies that were inside. And then she says, no, you take it, take it. I've got a downsize, take it, take it. So it came back to me. And I've been thinking about it all night and I've decided that I'm going to gift it back to her and restore it. So my thoughts are removing the satin inside, which has had its day. It is so soft and so delicate and it's just old. So I've just now started removing the inside lining <clears throat> and um, this is what's come out, this long piece. And I'm thinking, for those who know me and know my channel, I love to embroider. So I'm thinking of doing a slow stitch piece um, and lining it with some embroidery and doilies and slow stitch. She loves doilies and she loves lace. So... And this is her favourite colour. She even pointed to a paint swatch earlier in the week when we were all together having dinner one evening and she loves that mint green. And then when I open this little box up, here's the, here's the mint green again. So I'm thinking if I can find some fabrics or some at least some threads in these colours and embroider something to reline this, and then to make it a little bit more uh, useful, instead of it just being empty for things to go in and then it's sort of forgotten about it, I'm thinking about raising the floor of the basket up so it becomes a pin cushion, a very large pin cushion with a lid. And that way, I'm thinking it might stay on her sewing table and then when she wants a pin or a needle, she can just pop the lid and they're just sitting in there. So I'll have to have a little think about the height. Actually, my pin cushion is with me. So <clears throat> it needs to hold the pins and the lid still closed. That's a big needle, so we won't worry about him. Just pop him down. Yeah. So I'm thinking if I made the floor of it about that width and reinserted it, the... Um, pins that noise if you're wondering what that groaning noise is is a puppy that's with us so just ignore puppy who's chewing on a puppy toy back to the sewing basket how rude of him to interrupt the um that's the plan so i thought i'd turn the camera on we can work through the process together as we restore this little basket turn it into a usable pin cushion because you know back in the day they only gave us the lid to put um, pins and needles in so let's make the whole bottom a pin cushion and then it can sit out be used regularly because everything structurally is really good the hinges the little um, clasp like it's just really good okay i'm gonna my puppy's about to drop his water bottle and it's metal and it's going to make a clinging noise. So just give me a second. Bandit, come here. <clears throat> come on, Bandit. Naughty puppy, he needs to have a nap. I've already walked him up and down the beach to try and wear him out. And all it's done is wear me out. And he's now ready to play again. Puppies, what can I say? Okay, where was I? I've removed the braid that was sitting along that outer edge. I should be able to find something somewhere that will 
be able to go back here. I've seen these types of braids around for sale, so that shouldn't be a problem. I may even have something in my stash back in my craft room. This will make a perfect uh, pattern to embroider around that edge with something. And I just started easing off this top piece. And it looks like they've used little, um, little nails to fit it to that little lid. Sorry about the light, guys. The sun's coming up just over my shoulder. So it's probably a little bit off the lighting. Look at that. Oh, she's an old girl. Bit of dust, but that's okay. So I might be able to reproduce that. Puppy's now at the bottom of the camera. My goodness, what, what a mess of a video this is gonna be. This is what happens when you try and do something off the cuff with no plan. Um, now, what was I thinking now that puppy's at my feet chewing my ankles? Oh, he's so cute. Oh, they're sharp. Oh. Anyway, stay focused. That's one pattern we can reproduce. We've got our side and we've got the little base plate. So we now know how big our pincushion needs to be. So I'll just put the little box to one side and I will just show you um, what goodies came with the little box. Actually, I'm going to stop the video for a second and give Puppy a toy because he's really chewing at my toes. Won't be a okay. moment, I'm back. Why is it that when you give a puppy all of these toys, their favorite is a bottle, an old plastic bottle. Well, it's not old, it's a water bottle that he's crimped up and that's his favorite. Don't get it. Don't need to buy anything for puppies. Just give them a uh, empty, empty um, water bottle. Let's have a little look through here. Some goodies we got from the little basket. We've got a little hanky. Oh, look at that, some original tatting. Oh boy, isn't that cute? Oh, isn't that sweet? Look at that little embroidery. Mmm, so I'm thinking we might be able to reinsert some of this tatting into our project as we um, renovate the little sewing basket. And this, she said she actually made this little embroidery isn't that sweet when she was a little girl and she never got around to crocheting the um and finishing i wonder if we can use that as part of the top gee look at that that will fit you know with a little bit of wriggling that could be the top inside the lid. How sweet is that? Oh, love it. Love it. That will fit beautifully. Okay, so that's a plan. We're gonna be able to use that. I think that tatting might be able to be used for sure. We've got some lace with a little spot. Very old. Some more lace with a little little shell, We've got a little bunny. Oh no, it's a little kangaroo. Must have come off one of the, her kids' clothes. Some little motifs, little sausage dog, some ribbon, and then a piece of lace. Actually, it looks like a runner, a little table runner. It's got a little feature at the end of it. So some treasures from inside the sewing basket. And I think we can use some of these in our little restoration, even this lace too. So I might pop it all into some uh, nappy sand just to freshen everything up. And then I can start thinking about some of these pieces that we've got. Puppy's about to throw it up. Did you hear that? That's Bandit throwing his water bowl. One second, Bandit. Oh my goodness me. I bet you're all giggling away there. So the water bowl is now being flung and because we're on tiles and it is metal, you imagine it makes the best puppy sound. Okay, I'm gonna turn the video off here. I'm gonna have a good think about what I'm gonna do and when I come back, I'll give you an update of where I'm heading with this restoration and then um, we'll start the process of restoring this gorgeous little sewing basket and um, let's see where it takes us. Should be fun.
Okay, see you in a second. Okay, I'm back. So I've just started creating some pieces that will replace the uh, elements from our little basket. And I'm using muslin as my um, sub fabric. Now there'll be embroidery and doilies and all sorts of things go on top of this muslin, but it will be a piece that just gives me um, some structure to my um, embroidery. Now, when they've made this lid, for example, they've probably only allowed oh, barely a quarter of an inch as a little seam. I'm going to cut this piece a little bit bigger because as you know, when you embroider, um, the fabric can pull in a little bit. So I'm just now drawing around the little plate that was in the top of the basket just to give me a boundary that I know that this original piece of card was um, that sort of size. So I'm just going to trim this back just a little bit more with a snip and a rip. So that one there is going to be the top of the basket or the lid of the basket. So now I know my sizing. So my piece of Whatever I do, it's got to be in that space. So that's that template done. Now the base of the basket was this little bit of cardboard. And they've also got a bit of a, a quarter of an inch seam, um, not seam, turned in area as well. So I'm just going to, with my Frixen pen, which is removed due to heat, so perfect for this type of thing. Just drawing around that base. So now I know the size for the bottom of the basket. Okay, so that's that template taken care of. Just pop that there. And then the wall of the basket. I've just torn a piece of muslin for that. And I've just added a little extra. There is a um, seam allowance here of quarter of an inch but I'm gonna just make it a little bit bigger because as I embroider the fabric will come in a little bit that's just what happens when you start adding stitches and things to um, you know fabric so I'm allowing just that little extra just in case I need it okay so that's that piece also now done so there's our three new replacement template so i can put the old green one away i'll just sit it back in the basket so it's out of the way i've kept a little bit of this braid so if i'm out shopping you know i've got a bit of a reference of what um, width that is it'll have to be very narrow braid because it will affect the closing of the lid so I'm going to put a little bit of that in my handbag. So as I'm out and about, I may just find something for the um, braid. Now, I think that's it. I'm going to finish the video at this point, And this will be, you know, just the introduction of and the plan. And video number two will be um, maybe some design elements and the starting of um, the embroidery, which I really don't know what I'm going to do yet, but we'll see. Uh, I'm sure something will come together. Okay, everyone, thanks for joining in with me. If you want to see more of this little series, um, subscribe and hit the little bell that's in the bottom corner. That notifies you that I've just posted another video. I'm not sure when the next video will be. It might be in a week, might be in two weeks time, but at least if you've clicked the little bell, you've, um, you've got you know, a notification that I'm moving along with the project. Okay, thanks everyone, bye.